If you're new to the network automation space, Ansible is a term that you're going to stumble across at some point in your automation journey. But what is Ansible and why should you care about it? That's what this video is going to cover. Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here and you're interested in growing your IT skills and your IT career, you're in the right place. Just hit that subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified when new videos come available. All right, Ansible. What is Ansible all about? If you look up the actual definition to Ansible, you'll see a term that it's an automation and orchestration tool. That's a fancy way of saying that it knows when to change the configuration of something and in what order. So maybe that's spinning up new servers so that you can scale out an application. Or in the networking case, maybe that's applying a networking change to the entire network and in what order that change needs to happen. You see, Ansible is now becoming something that's called the intent driven network. In this case, we just tell Ansible what our desire is. For instance, we want VLAN 100 to exist. And Ansible will go out to all of the network devices and make sure that VLAN 100 exists. And if it does exist, it carries on about its business. It doesn't try to change anything. But if it doesn't exist, it will create VLAN 100 on all the devices that you specify. It does this in a very, very simple and clean and concise way. In fact, let me show you. I'm over on my Ubuntu Linux machine and this is my viral environment. Here's the situation. I have a Nexus 9K and a Nexus 7K, two different platforms, uh, but I want to accomplish the same task by automating some deployment of loopback interfaces. Maybe I'm deploying OSPF in a large environment and I want to have loopback interfaces created. So in my situation, I'll create a loopback one on each device a loopback 2 on each device, and I specifically want loopback 1 to exist in the 172.20.1 24-bit subnet, and I'll say the loopback 2 on each of these devices needs to be in 172.22.1 24-bit subnet. So what Ansible is going to do is we'll tell Ansible that here's the list of devices. We'll call those list of devices switches, something as simple as that. Under the hood, Ansible will know how to translate switches into those IP addresses because I've already configured it that way. We'll then tell it, we want to make sure that these loopback interfaces exist on these devices, and then they need to have IP addresses in those subnets. How does Ansible know how to do all of this stuff? Well, it's some basic configuration items using something called the Ansible Playbook. Ansible playbooks, if I just pull this guy up right here, Ansible playbooks are written in YAML. And if you're totally new to YAML, YAML's just another way to serialize data. Basically, think about this as human-readable JSON or human-readable XML. That's exactly what's happening here. Anytime you see one of these little dashes here, you can think about that as a new dictionary or a new object. And anytime there's an indentation, you could expect to see that as something like an array containing those objects. So Ansible, the entire point of Ansible is that it comes out of the box with pre-built capabilities of doing these types of tasks, and those are called modules. So when I see NXOS interface and NXOS layer three interfaces, I actually know that under the hood, that's Ansible's ability to run Python scripts with these parameters that I've passed into it. Now, where did those parameters come from? We'll take it one step further. We'll click on under host vars over here on the right hand side. You can see I've got the loopback names and the loopback IP addresses for each one of these network devices here. So basically the playbook is the shell of what commands it's going to run and using host vars or host variables. Another way of saying that is host specific data. I can pass host specific data into these playbooks and Ansible will know how to carry out these tasks. What it looks like at the end of the day is something like this. I simply say Ansible run the playbook called loopback.yaml and in just a couple seconds here's what it did. It connected to those network devices and because 
these Layer 3 interfaces already existed, it validated that everything was okay and there were no changes to make on this environment. In other words, my network already met the desired state, so Ansible didn't have to take any actions here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into my variables here, and I'm going to create one more loopback to force Ansible into making a change. I'll say loopback3 IP address, we'll say 172.24.1.2, 24 bit subnet mask. And on the other network device here, I'll say name loopback3 IP address 24.1.3 slash 24. And just for good measure, watch this. I'm also going to change loopback2 to be a dot three. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through this list and it's gonna say, okay, I see loopback one exists. I see loopback two exists. I don't see that loopback three exists and it's gonna create loopback three. Then it's going to validate the IP address settings and it's going to change the IP address of loopback two and set the IP address of loopback three. With those changes saved, I'm gonna go back to my script here and just rerun the script. And look at that, now I see changes. Now check this out. This output tells me that I have had several tasks that were met the desired state. Everything was okay there, but then we had some tasks that had to be changed. The creation of loopback three happened on both 172.16.168 and 172.16.14, as well as the changing of my IP address here and the setting of these two IP addresses on those hosts too. So the idea now is that you can perform batch operations very cleanly and very easily using Ansible and Ansible playbooks, but here's the real kicker. Where this really comes into play is now I can check these playbooks into source control. I can use Git at this point to now maintain the version history of my network. Whenever the desired state changed, like whenever we changed to add loopback three and changed one of the loopback addresses on one of the hosts, now version control, now that that's checked into version control, I can see that historical change. And if there's any problem with it, I can revert right back to the old version. It's more than just automating and orchestrating changes to our network. It's now maintaining the history of our network and all of our changes too. Look, Ansible is a huge, huge tool. The biggest nuggets that I created in the entire DevNet course were all on Ansible. There's way too much on Ansible for me to pack into one YouTube video, so I really wanna encourage you to check out the nuggets on CBT Nuggets, link below. Get started with this amazing open source tool. Check out how you can design Ansible playbooks and ultimately automate and maintain your networks. All right, thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.